guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the long awaited, long promised AM skincare routine. Thank you all so much, especially the ones who have been constantly messaging me and asking for this, for being patient, because I think I've been promising this since before I moved out of our last house, which was two months ago. So <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm finally doing it. I'm finally doing it. Today we are talking about the AM skincare routine. So what you're seeing is Chad's view every morning. <laughs> I am bringing you my very bare face. There is absolutely nothing on my face, no brows, no nothing, as I am sure you are very aware. For those of you that are new to my channel, I am exactly to the day, one month away from turning 40. My skin is normal to sometimes dry, but according to my esthetician and my personal opinion, I am pretty normal. I don't get oily and I rarely have dry flakes. Sometimes in the dead of winter, I can feel tightness. My main focus when I choose skincare products is anti-aging benefits, prevention, aging gracefully. I don't really have acne. I don't have anything else that I need to correct. Most of my choices are preventative. I have already washed my face at the sink. I will show you what I used and to let you know there are options for a lot of these steps. I will show you all the options. I will obviously only use one, but I will link everything down in the description bar. So if you are like, oh my goodness, what did you say? Just go down there. It's going to have everything that I've talked about linked per the step that I'm using it. So right now I am going between two cleansers in the morning. The first is the Curology cleanser that I talked about in my Curology review. I really do enjoy this. The other one is the Beauty Counter Counter Start Cocoa Cream Cleanser. If you've watched any of my skincare videos, you know that my favorite cleansers as a whole are from Beauty Counter. So you'll see that I use those in the morning and at night, but these are the two that I am rotating through right now. So the next step is my either toning slash acid step. For a very long time, I completely stayed off of acids. I had over exfoliated my skin. I had compromised my barrier. My esthetician was like, girl, lay off the acids for a while. I mean, I think I laid off for like eight months where I didn't use any acids at all. And I have slowly begun to reintroduce lactic acid into my routine. I use it three times a week in place of the toning step. So I will show you when I'm not using an acid, which I am going to use today, I always use my Revision Soothing Facial Rinse. This will show up in my PM routine as well. I absolutely love this as a hydrating toner. It's my favorite. I have gone through countless bottles and I always have one on backup. So if I am not doing an acid step three days a week, the other four days a week, I'm doing a toner at this step. I'm currently rotating between two acids, one of which I'm not going to be using today, but is the Josh Rosebrook Daily Acid Toner. It's a brightening facial toner. This I have only been using for about three to four weeks now. I got it in my last detox box. This is the only product that I have been able to be to use in a while that has glycolic acid. I do not think it has a ton of glycolic acid in it, but I am able to use this without overly sensitizing my skin. And again, I only use this twice a week because on the other days, like today, I'm gonna to be using my Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Ultra Gentle Daily Peel. So the Ultra Gentle is the one without glycolic acid. It only has lactic acid in it. So that's what I'm gonna be using today. And how you use it is the first exfoliate and smooth side. You basically run, run it over your skin like you would any kind of toner pad and then you let it sit for two minutes. After that two minutes, you will take the second toner pad, which is basically just a neutralizer. It's kind of equivalent in my mind to spritzing your face with a mist or water just to neutralize that acid from getting so deep down and maybe oversensitizing. So I take this all the way down my neck, all over my face. I really do it quite a bit because I want to, I want to get as much of the acid treatment off the pad as possible before I let it soak in for the two minutes. So I will do that off camera right now. So after the two minutes where I usually just go brush my teeth or do something to that effect, check my email, you know, whatever I can get done, I will take this neutralizing step run that over gently of my skin, and then I'm done with my acid treatment for the day. 
Now, my morning routine is my most complex. This is where I use the most amount of serums. It's the most steps. My night routine is going to be much shorter. Do I think you need every single one of these serums? No. Do I think I need every one of these serums to have my skin look the way it does? Yes, that's why I choose to do it. I am in no way saying all of you go out and buy all this right now because I'm the first to say I buy medical grade skincare. When I say medical grade, I mean something that you typically can only get from certified dealers or your derm office or physician's office or plastic surgeon's office. That's what I mean. Typically medical grade has more clinical studies behind it. I'm not saying that nothing else will work. I'm just saying that's what I use a lot of and it tends to be more expensive. Please do not take this as me saying, in order to have great skin, you have to spend hundreds of dollars. I do not want that to be the takeaway from this video. What I want to be the takeaway is, hey guys, this is what I use. Y'all ask, and I'm here to tell you. One thing I will never be without, and I do think is important for everybody to use, is a vitamin C serum. I have used many, 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 many vitamin Cs over the years, and my favorite is hands down the Truth Treatments Vitamin C Transdermal Serum. This is a tetrahexdecal exorbate, which is a vitamin C derivative. It is 80% of that, and it has absolutely no fillers whatsoever in this. It is an oil-based serum. It needs some kind of water to help absorb it and help it work throughout your skin. They sell a mist, the Biometric Mineral Mist. I am not saying you have to have this to use this. In fact, I have not always used this. I will use a mist of some sort, but I would say probably half the amount of time that I have used this, which has been years, I have used the actual mist that they sell to go with it. So I don't want you to think that that's absolutely a necessity. Now this does have minerals that are gonna help activate the vitamin C in this, but again, I haven't always used that. I do like to make sure my skin is nice and damp before I go in with any serums. The mist that I have been using lately is from Clarity RX, and this is the Take Your Vitamins Daily Mineral Spray for Thirsty Skin. So I will mist this all over. Then I will take two pumps of the mineral mist. I do not mist this all over my face because it is not a huge bottle and I don't wanna waste it. <laughs> then I will take the transdermal C serum and I will put one, two drops in that mist. That's all you need. And I will rub it into my skin. I have had many, 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 many people ask me if I feel like this is too tacky on the skin. I personally do not. It is a little bit of a sticky serum, but you really should not be using more than two drops. Some people only use one. If you were to take that whole dropper and put it on your skin, not only are you literally watching your money go down the drain or in your skin way too fast, you will feel oily and greasy because it's not meant to be used that way. So truly mix it with some kind of mist, only use two drops and see if that helps. Another thing I get asked is, can you use acids like the acid pad that I used with vitamin C? Vitamin C is an acid, L-exorbit acid, in its most pure form. And even then, yes, you can use them together. If you use a very high percentage of glycolic and a very high percentage of vitamin C in the L-exorbic acid form, it can be sensitizing. If you have sensitive skin, it can aggravate it and it can be a little bit irritating. So you need to find out what works best for you. I have found that I have found no irritation whatsoever using the tetrahexdecal exorbate form of vitamin C with acids. I will then go in with my growth factor. Now I had used my Neocutis Bio Serum Firm, I believe is what it's called, their newest growth factor and peptide serum. I had gone through three bottles of that and I loved it. And then I decided to try the new Skin Medica TNS Advanced Plus Serum. Growth factors are a sticky point with some people. They don't want to use them. I think if you have had skin cancer or if you've had any growth at all on your skin, you probably should steer clear from growth factor serums. There are lots of reasons why people choose not to and choose to use them. I personally think that as long as you're using a Retin-A or a Tretinoin cream, um, or retinol of some sort, a good vitamin C like I just used, 
and maybe some kind of peptide serum, you're going to be okay. I like to go above and beyond because I'm that person. So I like to use a growth factor. And this is their newest form of the Advanced Plus Serum. It has a dual chamber. The last one had vitamin C included in it. This one does not. However, it does have peptides that are also included with the growth factor. It's in a dual chamber. So one side is the growth factor. The other side is the other skincare benefits. So I take one pump of this, and I forgot to spray my face. Let me do that. And I just apply this. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, how come you don't take yourself all the way down your neck? because I use a separate neck cream that is very potent, and I want that to be the main thing that's on my neck. If you do not use a neck cream, yes, I recommend taking anything you put on your face down your neck. Now, if you use a strong glycolic, you might want to steer clear of your neck. If you use a retinoid uh, or a tretinoin cream, you might want to steer clear of your neck because the, neck, the skin on our neck is thinner than the skin on our face, and sometimes it can be sensitized much quicker. Now you notice my face gets red as I rub my products in. I am not a patter, I am a rubber. Something about that doesn't sound right, <laughs> but it's true. And I like to really massage the products into my skin. Occasionally I will use a gua sha tool or some other kind of tool to massage my face. If I don't use that, then I will make sure to manually massage with my fingers. Going up and then coming down to drain your lymphatic system on the neck. The next serum I'm going to use is a hyaluronic acid serum. I love using these before I apply my moisturizer. I live in a very humid climate even when it's cold. In Tennessee it is extremely humid so I will draw moisture from the air. If you live in a very dry 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 climate, hyaluronic acid might actually do the opposite of what you want because it does draw moisture from the air and from products you put on top. I'm not saying that if you live in a dry climate, you absolutely can't use it, but I do think it's very imperative to put a good moisturizer on top of hyaluronic acid. The one I am currently using is from Jan Marini, and it is the Hyla 3D HA Activating Complex. I also spray this time, and I will use one pump of this. It looks kind of yellow. Tap it in between my fingers, tap it on my face, and then rub it in. Red, 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 red. Okay, eye cream. I am only gonna talk about one eye cream that I use because I do tend to change it up. However, I have decided to, to do a top five eye cream video very soon. So this will be included in it, but I don't wanna tell you any of the other ones that I use because I wanna save it for that video. This is the First Aid Beauty Niacinamide Brightening Eye Cream. Love this for many reasons. It's very moisturizing. It has that brightening pearlescent effect has niacinamide, which in itself brightens the skin. And I truly think that if you were gonna buy any eye creams from over the counter, meaning like what you can get at Sephora and Ulta, First Aid Beauty is the way to go. They make super good eye creams. For moisturizer, I have talked many times and I will link the Counter Time Beauty Counter Moisturizer. I've gone through two of those. I'm currently out of it. I will be repurchasing because I do truly love that moisturizer. So I will link that down below. This is what I have been using and I've actually really been loving this as well. This is from Bay Harbor Beauty, which I've talked about them before. She, Julie owns it and she is on Etsy and she makes great products. This is the Hydrating Water Gel, anti-aging weightless moisturizer with skin firming extracts. The ingredients list on this is amazing. The very first ingredient is beta-glucan, which is known to help soothe and calm skin while also plumping it and helping with fine lines and wrinkles. It has niacinamide, lactic acid down low on the list, but that's in that, rosemary extract, collagen, amino acids, sea kelp, bioferment, and lots of good ingredients, nothing like filler-wise. It comes in one of these airtight pumps. So what I do is I pump one pump. You can see what it looks like. It's truly like a water gel. And apply that to my skin on top of my hyaluronic acid. This has almost an apple scent to it. It's very nice. I don't think it's too much. Like it's not going to overpower anything and it doesn't linger. So at this point, I let this sink in for about 30 seconds before I go into my final serum. Yes, 
my final serum. I have yet another serum. And that is the Definage 8-in-1 Bio Serum. This is a patented defi deficins, I think is what they call, formula from Definage. And it is so incredibly good. I think this is my fifth bottle. One bottle lasts me two months. I use two pumps in the morning. It states to use it morning and night. I choose not to. I choose to only use it in the morning, so it makes it last a little bit longer. I have said many times that I cannot expressly tell you all the great things this does because I don't even think at this point that I understand it. <laughs> but it does have deficits. It rejuvenates smoothness, clarity, radiance, visible hydration, minimizes the look of lines, wrinkles, pore size, and signs of redness. It's paraben-free, does not contain animal and human-derived ingredients. Now, it says to apply it 30 seconds after applying the 24-7 Barrier Balance Cream, which they sell, obviously, in this line. I have used a whole bottle of that, and I think it's great. My personal opinion is that you don't have to use that to make this effective. Because I've gone through five bottles of this, only one of the Barrier Creams. So I find that whatever moisturizer I put it on top of, it works great. Why do you have to put it on top of a moisturizer, you ask? Because there are ingredients in this, I believe it's the deficits, that cannot have anything else penetrate through it. So if you're using a moisturizer that has extracts and beta-glucan and things that you want to actually sink into your skin, it would be a waste to put that on top of this because none of that would be able to sink in. So I use this as my very last step before SPF. I will, since I've let my moisturizer sink in, spritz one more time, take two pumps of this, and apply it. Now, I personally think that this and growth factors works in two different ways, but I also personally don't necessarily think you need both. I think that you could probably pick one or two and see similar good results. I am an overachiever, again, so... I like to use both, but they're both pretty expensive products, so I would choose accordingly, and I think you will be very happy with either one. The main benefit I have found with this is firming. I, I really do think that it has helped firmed, firmed, firm my skin so much so that I really don't want it to not be in my routine as long as I'm able to purchase it. Now that is all of the long-winded serums and everything that I use in my routine. The next step and most important step, in my opinion, is going to be your SPF. I use many, many, many SPFs and I have talked about them all in length. I will, I believe I have done a whole separate SPF video that I will put up in a card. Highly recommend you checking that out because I talk about my very favorite ones, why I like them versus the other ones, what skin types they would be best on, and so on. I still wholeheartedly feel like the SPF 44 from Elta MD UV Elements is my very favorite SPF. Countless bottles of these. Chad uses this. My girls use it. We love this SPF. However, today I am not going to be wearing makeup. We are taking the girls on a hike to a local waterfall in a little bit, and so there's just no point in me putting makeup on. So in order to have the most even coverage possible, I'm going to use the Elastin Pro Mineral Broad Spectrum Sunscreen SPF 36 because this has the most coverage of all of the SPFs that I use. And I almost forgot my neck cream. So let's hold the SPF thought real quick. I was doing so good on the order. Let me put on the neck cream real quick. This is the Elastin Skincare Restorative Neck Complex with Trihex technology. I bought this after I was on a training call through Harbin House with Elastin. And it, their Trihex technology is actually very interesting. And I'll talk more about that in my PM skincare routine. But I do use this twice a day. I use it in the morning and at night. And I use one pump each time. So you can see it comes with another airless pump. And I take one pump. And I will use that on my neck as well as my decollete. And the training, like the rep on that call said that most people see the most effects towards the end of their first bottle. And neck creams are kind of like the thing that if you want to continue to see the effects, you kind of have to keep using it. Sinks in really well. I feel like I have found, seen the most effect right here. I feel like it's not as saggy as it was. Um, I still have the lines in my neck, but those are so deep. They're, it's like tech neck from looking down at my phone so much. 
I don't even think a neck cream is going to be able to take those away. They have softened quite a bit, and I do feel like it helps the lines that I get in my decollete, which might even be able to tell some of them from sleeping on my side and, you know, having my boobs pressed together and it just gets all crinkly. Life of a, a life of a lady, you know. So I have been enjoying that. All right, back to the, the SPF as our final step. Again, this has the most amount of coverage. So take three pumps of that and put that all over my face, down my neck. I won't be wearing a tank top today when we go hiking, but I will put some type of SPF on my, you know, arms and stuff as we're out there as well. Really rub that in, and by the time we go, I'll probably reapply this. If I have makeup on, I don't reapply this on top of it or any other liquid sun care, but I will use like the Color Science Sheer Matte 30, which I've really been enjoying to reapply my makeup, or the Jane Ardell Powder Me SPF, something to that effect if I do have makeup on. Now, because I'm not wearing makeup today, typically this is where I stop my skincare routine. I'll go eat my breakfast, I'll get the girls to school, I'll you know do what, everything that I need to do, and then I will come back and do my makeup like hours later. Because I'm not doing makeup today, I'm going to include the Color Science 3-in-1 Total Eye, which is typically part of my makeup routine into my skincare routine. Because even when I don't wear makeup, I will wear this, and it's for a couple reasons. One, because it helps cover up my dark circles. And two, because it is something that has skincare in it as well. And it also has an SPF 35. It's kind of like a triple effect, glorious product that y'all know I love so much. I have some on my upper lid because I do have quite a bit of discoloration on my eyelids always have, likely always will, but that also gives me that SPF on top of my lids, which is another place that we tend to neglect. And the very final step is a lip balm. I use a different one at night, but I use the Spa Ritual Body Care Citrus Cardamom Moisture Balm in the morning. This is my second tube of this, so moisturizing. So even though that took forever and a day, I realized that, this takes me no longer than 10 minutes in the morning to do. I am completely covered. I am ready for a day. I will put on my brows before I go to the waterfall, but that's it. That's it, that's all I need. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, I will link everything I talked about down below in the description bar. Let me know your favorite all-time skincare product down in the comments section below and stay tuned because my much shorter, much more succinct PM skincare routine is coming your way soon. I hope you are all healthy, safe, and sane, and that most of all, you go out and have a very blessed day.